Ah, où Tu es en, en Paris maintenant Oui, je suis ah. à côté de Disneyland Paris. Ah, magnifique Bien, <rire> bienvenue <rire> Bienvenue aux États-Unis. <rire> euh, J'ai une équipe sur place à Los Angeles, mais je suis moi pour l'instant à côté de Paris. Ah, cool Mais on va faire l'interview en anglais. <rire> Yes. Hello, Shirley, Jose, Will, and Danny. To begin, I would like to say bravo for this great and original movie. The acting are really good as a script and the direction. Please, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background? For all. What do you think, Shirley? Yeah, I guess I can go first. Um, yeah, I'm Shirley. I... Uh, I, I play Krista in the movie Beast Beast and also played Krista in the short, uh, which was at South by. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm currently a college student right now. <laughs> and I grew up acting. Oh, did my internet just cut out? No, we, we caught, yeah. it, all. We caught <laughs> it all. Okay, cool. cool. Great, and I'm, I'm Will Madden. I play Adam Manigan in Beast Beast and uh, brothers of Danny, brother of Danny, and uh, longtime collaborators. Very good. Danny, it is your second movie after Euphoria eight years ago. What can you tell us about the genesis of the film from the short uh, movie, Krista, to this one? Uh, well, we, uh, we really felt like we found a cinematic voice that we liked in Krista. And we said, oh, let's let's explore this more. Let's really find this kind of this uh, textured approach to showing this this theater life and, and how it translates in and out of the real world. And so we just kind of felt like exploring that and, and opening it up more and also showing more of um, we really we really had such a great time working with Shirley and we only got to see this sort of dark, gloomy version of her. Um, when in, in real life, like, you know, Shirley has, has such a kind of exuberant personality and, and but also like we wanted to show that um, that contrast we thought um, having a having suffered through this traumatic event we wanted to tell the story with the contrast of this is what she was like beforehand so uh, we really that was really the the impetus to start cracking it open and then there were these other story ideas that I thought um, could could be interesting um, stories to interweave, you know, and like Will's character Adam would like doing the YouTube thing, and um, and then Jose's character being the new guy and kind of trying to figure out where his path is. And um, I thought I thought all those flavors might be interesting all together. Chole, Jose, and Will, can you say some words about your character and what commonalities do you have with them? It looks like we lost Jose. I guess his, I don't know if his internet cut out or something. Oh, so I guess yeah. it'll just be Will and Shirley now. Okay. Uh, so I play Adam Manigan, who is a YouTube gun vlogger. So he makes firearm videos about how to uh, do home defense and responsible uh, firearm safety and shooting. And he's trying to make a living doing that. He's living at home with his parents, sort of, you know, not the most social guy, sort of an isolated guy. And, um, Uh, kind of a little a little bit desperate and kind of at a, a sort of a crossroads of like trying to figure out what he wants to do and it puts him in kind of a, a vulnerable place and I guess I sort of can connect to it you know just from the perspective of being an artist and hoofing it and kind of trying to find your your way into something and grow with your craft and to see if anyone even cares you know and trying to kind of make it make it all work in a way so I definitely could could connect to him on that on that sort of artist level, if you could call him an artist. Charlie? Yeah, I, I think for me, so I, um, I played Krista. Yes. Um, yeah, I played Krista. Um, and I, as Danny kind of alluded to before, Krista is like a super theater kid. She's in high school. Um, and I related to a lot of who she was. And I think that was obviously really intentional on Danny's part. Because um, am I cutting? Is my internet cutting in and out? A little Sometimes. bit, but. Yeah, we can hear it. It, it yeah. sounds, it, we're hearing you though. Okay, sorry. Yeah, because it's like freezing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just keep talking. Um, but yeah, uh, Danny kind of wrote Krista for the feature with me in mind and so kind of in interjected a lot of my personality and I think interests in high school. And so I really related a lot to her, especially because um, throughout the movie, she's experiencing so many new things for the first time, you know, stumbling her way through first love and, um, growing, which I think kind of everyone can relate to, at least to some degree. Um, 
And so it was really fun to get to play her. I just turned 18 too. So I think a lot of what Krista was experiencing very much paralleled with what, what, what I was experiencing. Um, so it was just really fun to get to play her, yeah. Uh, Will and Danny, if my researches are good, you are brothers. Can you talk about your collaboration on this great movie? Is it not too difficult or helpful to work together? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not difficult. I, not, not from my, not from my end. <laughs> um, I, I like to say that um, when you cast Will, it's like casting a co-writer. You know, it's like hiring a co-writer because he's going to do so much work Um, and just really get such a such a grip on who the character is and the world from which that character comes um, that it, that and, and maybe we just we learned that growing up together, you know, that sort of pushing each other and going like kind of, you know, taking it all the way. And so it just it really it's very fluid. It's very there's there was I can't really think of a time where there was like friction where meaning like I, I was looking for something that he wasn't looking for or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so, so to me, I, I think I, I would describe it as like a very, very fluid process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I would say that the only, yeah, only real challenging moments were not between us as collaborators, but both of us going for the same thing and not quite being able to find it, but sort of on the same page. Yeah. And um, And yeah, the main thing is, I just feel, I just, when you work with anyone who you know and trust and you know their work, you just feel more uh, willing to take risks and you feel much more trusting. And it's like, I, I know the kind, what Danny's taste is, I know what his standards are. I can trust that, you know, when I kind of mess up, uh, you know, there's no, no fear of that being in the movie. So it's like, I can really explore. And that's kind of the best thing about working with anyone you know, but particularly, you know, a family member, so. Um, Boris, we have Jose again. Jose, do you want to talk about, wait, we, we can't hear you, Jose. Oh, uh, yeah. The, um, sorry. The, uh, I was, I tuned in like at the first seconds of it, but yeah. then my phone overheated. Oh, my phone overheated. And that's a possible thing just to let all you guys know in, the, in this room. <laughs> it happens. There's, you know, if you got a phone, sometimes it can overheat. And that's what well, happened. Jose, talk about, about Boris asked a question. He said, um, talk about you and what similarities you have to the character of Nita. Oh, so so me, Jose Angeles, and Nito, the character I played, there's a huge difference. I didn't go to Panther High School. Like, that's all I made. I, I'm, I didn't grow up in uh, Georgia. Well, he actually moved into Georgia. That's something that's similar. We both, <laughs> we both approached Georgia as a new place. Like, Georgia was like, what kind of place is this? Right, I've right. never been to Georgia. You know, so... That, that was like the similarity that Nito and I were both experiencing something new, just like the movie. It was like super new to make that movie. That was like the first movie I ever done. So do you yeah, feel the, do you feel the personality is, is similar? I see personality wise, uh, like he was kind of like a uh, shy more of, and mm -hmm. me, I'm like, you know, I'm not too shy. Like maybe at first I get shy, but then later on, I'm like, I kind of break in. You know, I'm like, all right, I could be myself. I could yeah. take off my shirt and stuff like that. Like when I get comfy. Um, <laughs> right. But like Nito, he, he was like, he got into the wrong uh, crew in the movie, which was like, dude, that was super, uh, that was a person that, or a character trait that I've been through, like going into like the wrong uh, crew sometimes. Um, that whew, getting into the wrong hands kind of thing. Um, and that led him to, you know, the, the ending of the movie, man, that's deep, but Boris, if I could say though, what, um, uh, Nito and I had similarity, like in character was that we both like skateboarding. <laughs> I love skateboarding. I love skateboarding. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Jose, before this interview, I have watched some of your skate videos on in Brussels, San Francisco, and they are already a ransom. In this video, uh, also, there is got some great stunts. Can you tell us about your training? I hope you got such a professional and I was on level. Your video are wow. Uh, thank you. Bonjour. Wait, no, that's not enough. Merci, merci. Merci, yes. Merci. Merci. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the Brussels. Yeah. How did you train? How yeah. did you train, Jose? How did you get get to do what you do? Oh, I trained. So, like, especially for uh, the movie, 
I was like, I'm, I was just, I was trying to look good to you on screen. Uh, Cause you know, being an actor, you're like a model all of a sudden. You're like, oh, I'm going to be in front of everyone. <laughs> Shirley knows that. I saw Shirley and Will checking themselves out. Don't lie. You go in the mirror. <laughs> but I specifically would, would jump rope. And Will remembers that. And your dad remembers that. I would jump rope like every day in the patio. So jump rope cardio. Jump and you have I talk about your background of like like how you got like you did gymnastics and ballet and stuff. Oh yeah, 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 right? yeah. Okay. So my background with all the like because then I did like the skateboarding stuff. My background is like ballet. So I did ballet for like eight years, pretty like hardcore. I was doing the nutcracker. I was the nutcracker. <laughs> and um I was a Russian dancer in that too. And like I, I did a lot of ballet. I say ballet. Like, very uh, disciplined, you know? That was my discipline. And then as far as, like, skateboarding, I just go outside and do whatever, you know? That was my freedom. I climb a fence if I can. Yeah, yeah. TikTok. Uh, Charlotte, you deliver in this movie a such great interpretation. This is your first movie after some shorts. Why are you from such energy and be so great in the screen? Hmm. I, that's an interesting question. I guess I've never thought of uh, my performance or acting in that way. So I really appreciate you kind of um, <laughs> talking about it in such a lovely way. <laughs> so thank you. Um, in terms of, <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, in terms of where I find it, I guess so. I I went to performing arts high school in Los Angeles. Um, I was a theater major there, and that's actually where Danny and Will uh, found me. Um, and that's actually where Krista was shot as well, like the high school scenes. Um, so I had grown up with theater training, and actually, uh, even before that, my mom moved with me to Los Angeles from Washington State um, to pursue acting. So I kind of grew up. Um, knowing that that's what I wanted to do. But in terms of the performance itself, I think um, the energy that Krista has, I think was a product of uh, kind of collaborating a lot with Courtney Dietz who plays uh, Johanna, Krista's best friend. I think that instantly we really connected on set and um, very much got along the way that Krista and Johanna do in the film. And so it was so fun to get to bounce off of her. And um, one of my favorite scenes with her too is like the s'mores scene with the microwave and the marshmallow. And, and that was so fun because it was like, I think Danny also had a very specific memory of doing that as well with the marshmallow and the microwave. <laughs> And so it was, um, I think a lot of like Krista's exuberance comes from, you know, uh, I guess Danny kind of knowing how to capture these like really um, specific and very visceral, like, you know, moments between friends um, and, and me getting to play with that with Johanna. And in terms of, you know, scenes with, you know, Jose as Nito as well with Krista, I think a lot of like that electricity between them comes from Jose and I's real nerves on set in terms of approaching real romantic scenes which neither of us had done before and so a lot of I think their connection and that kind of like friction almost I think is actually rooted in real life um mm -hmm. that's where mm -hmm. those from. yeah <laughs> still feel them surely I still feel them um and I've been copying that s'mores thing when you microwave the s'mores and the marshmallow and the chocolate and the graham character you put them I've been doing that it's, it's fun yeah. it's fun you should try that over there you know of course <laughs> Danny, can you talk a little about your work with Alec Baldwin as executive producer? Yes. So they, um, uh, Alec Baldwin and his producing partner, Casey Bader, um, they saw the short film Krista that we had done and they reached out and just said, hey, can we help you on, on what's, what's coming up next? And I said, we're doing a feature. And so it was just kind of great timing. We were all preparing to go to Georgia to start making the movie and they just joined right on. Um, and he was such such a supportive. Uh, they they're such supportive uh, executives, and um, and of course Alec has been such a great kind of uh, supporter of the movie. And he came and we did press in Park City, and um, it was really great to have his support and his uh, enthusiasm with it. And uh, yeah, so so it, it just like they came in and they really just helped us with with the resources we needed to really finish the movie in the way that we thought it it needed. So. Will and Danny, I am a huge uh, Jim Cumming fan since I have discovered during the Deauville American Film Festival Thunderwood. He also plays a little role during one scene of this movie, A Cop, if I remember. Uh, yeah. Can you talk a little about your collaboration as an actor for in Thunderwood, the work of Snow Wallow and Danny as a sound designer on Thunderwood, but also with the so awaited movie, The Beta Test? Yes. 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, Jim had me play a, a small part in Thunder Road, which was a lot of fun. Um, he, you know, he's an old pal of Danny's from Emerson, and I kind of met him then forever ago when I was 15 or something. I worked on his first film years ago. And then the most recent film, Wolf of Snow Hollow, which came out in October, I play a character. We have a great couple scenes together, a scene together. And um, uh, he's the best. He, he knows like exactly what he wants, which is, which is like kind of a real blessing from a director. You know, he has a very specific vision. And then it comes down to like, just trying to find the truth and play within that vision, you know? And I think him and I had a lot of, um, you know, experiences rehearsing and preparing for it. And, um, you know, he's just like, he's like an energizer, he's like the energizer bunny. He's just like a battery all day. He's running around behind the camera, in front of the camera, over here, over there. And that's like, that energy is contagious. And um, he's just like the best, one of the best presences you can have on a set, I think, in whatever capacity he's, he's on as. Always inventing things, going for things. So, you know, he's, he's the man. So to have him come down, you know, we've been supporting Jim and I since 2005. We've been helping each other on each other's movies and stuff um, in whatever capacity makes sense at the time. So he came down as, you know, an executive producer on this, but he's hands on. And he said, you know, hey, I'm going to come to Georgia for a couple of weeks and help you film. Should I bring my cop uniform? And I said, uh, that, that's probably a good idea. Maybe bring that. <laughs> and so when it came time for him to go, you know, for Nito to get arrested. But um, yeah. No, it's always fun. It's, it's it's fun to have those little things, you know. And and we're, we're always kind of doing little like nods at each other. He put um, in the background of Thunder Road, uh, his character walks through a living room, and there's a short film that Will and I made playing in the background. So we were like, oh, okay, there's an opportunity. The family's watching TV here. Let's throw Thunder Road. That's it's kind of I don't know. It's a fun little kind of uh, you know putting it's featuring your friends in there, and you know Jim's just like he's part of the family. You know, I mean we're we're all helping each other out. So. For all, what were the main difficulties that you have encountered during the making of this movie? Mm. As an actor, as a director? Yeah, what do you think, Jose? What was the big uh, kind of challenge for you? The biggest challenge to me is always the script. It's always the memorization and knowing what, kind of getting in Danny's like mindset too on like, oh, how did Danny write this script? And like, how did he write this and how am I going to deliver it? Right. That was a challenge for me because it's, it's getting, mental. Getting the tone, getting the tone together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah getting the tone. That's great. What was, what was the challenge for you? Um, I think for me, uh, this was my first time being a, a lead in a feature. And on top of that, you know, also being thrown at, at, at some of the most like, you know, challenging pillars of being a lead, I guess, in terms of like, you know, tackling romance and then also tackling, you know, really heavy dramatic stuff as well. Um, and I never really done that, especially not at the same time and not in a feature film level and not as a lead. Um, so I think that those were kind of emotional moments that I knew I had to be prepared for and tackle. Um, so yeah, on the one hand, you know, the romance scenes, uh, I felt nerves, which we've already talked about. Uh, but in terms of the dramatic scenes, um, I think I can't give too much away about the film, but I will say that scenes with Will's character were tougher for me um, in terms of understanding where Krista was coming from and understanding how she would authentically be acting and reacting in these scenes, um, which um, Danny and Will both worked with me, you know, a lot on. And I think I learned a lot from that film experience. Um, I especially learned a lot about how you know, what types of methods for me getting into a scene work well. And I realized music was a really good thing for me. So a lot of times I would, you know, sit by myself with headphones on or I would, um, and, and that would be like before a dramatic scene or, or something to get me in the zone. Um, or like looking at things that my friends had given me and kind of using my friends as versions of Nito for Krista, you know. Um, so I think it was a lot of learning for me. And I think I, I've come out of that being a lot stronger of an actor than I was when I started. So um, yeah, I think that was for me. What about you, Will? Yeah, just there's always just challenges with any material, but the big thing was logistically shooting schedule wise. It's like the my first day was basically the, the finale of the movie between Shirley and my character. And then it was like three weeks of like nothing. And then all of my stuff in like 72 hours, more or less. So like that was something I was not used to on a, on a, on a feature film schedule. So it's adapting to that. Very, very high, very tall ass for Will acting alone at a computer screen and then doing a comedy scene and then drama and then coming back and doing another comedy scene. And like, 
it was um that was it was a, a lot of uh, emotional uh, elasticity that we needed from from all characters so yeah Jose can we expect to have uh, some video in Paris next year from you in skate yeah if you help me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. me in there, man. Like, maybe, <laughs> that would be great. Maybe. That's a fun trip. Hey, I've been talking to my buddies over here, though, in the Bay Area, and we've been thinking about going to Paris. So, hey, I might pay a visit. I touch. might pay a visit, yeah. Boris. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we can kick and it. My you know? question, which are your current projects for Hall? Yeah. Uh, I just acted in, in a feature film in New Mexico in January by uh, writer-director Pete Oz, who actually is also the editor, one of the editors on Beast Beast. <laughs> and he's been streaming his entire editing process on Twitch, every minute of it. And he just finished a cut of the movie that I haven't seen yet. But that was my most recent thing, as well as The Wolf of Snow Hollow, which came out uh, a few months ago by Jim Cummings. Pete Oz? Yeah. Jim Cummings? Yes, um, yeah, for me, I was actually working right after Sundance, I was working on a play at the Geffen Playhouse um, in Los Angeles called uh, Man of God. It was starring an all Asian cast about a Korean American storyline. Um, unfortunately, that had to close because of COVID-19. Um, and since then, um, at the end of April, I'll be filming a short film with Johnson Chen. Um, and that's going to be going to the Tribeca Film Festival. And um, also, I'm currently a junior at Harvard. So I'm still in school, doing Zoom classes. I think that's like my biggest task as of right now is finishing the semester, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And hey, um, you, I'm, I'm just writing, I'm developing a few different ideas and just really starting to, to have a, a fertile mind when it comes to, to writing and, and figuring out what the next project is. And Jose? Yeah, just making a music actually. I've been playing some music and I'm actually going to get a portable generator later so I can bring it to the park and then plug in my guitar amps and play at a park, nice. make like a little Woodstock going on. Yeah. And then also I can use it for a projector to show the movie Beast Beast coming at you yeah. at April 27th. <laughs> Remember to rate, subscribe, comment and give a share and a thumbs up. Boris. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye bye. Hey, we'll see you, Bye guys. We'll see you. Au revoir. Bye.